I'm going to be honest, I've never been a particular fan of 40k's Tyranids. I do enjoy them as an antagonist and as an all-consuming threat as are the bug-type aliens in any other setting. However, as someone who likes to build a story around my chosen factions, there's never been much appeal for me in an all-consuming, single-minded swarm. However, a while ago, I saw a set of minis that really caught my attention. I kept coming back to these and thinking about how fun they'd be to paint. Oshuna minis create a more buggy, deep sea theme that creeps me out more than any others I've seen. It also got me thinking about creating a story of an individual faction that I'm going to talk about soon in this video. Oshuna give these free sample STLs which I printed all of to make a test scheme. However, right after printing, they very generously sent over a recent release so you know I'm not bothering with these little punks. I'll mention here that they haven't sponsored me or given the files under any obligation, I'm just a massive fan. I decided to combine this with a challenge I recently signed up for called a Mother Colour Challenge. A mother colour is one you mix into every other colour so it tends towards that hue and kind of unifies it. I randomly selected a dark purple and decided this would be the shadow tone I work up from. So I primed the mini and then base coated it with this colour. I started by getting a basic colour down, dry brushing basic skin tone with about half as much purple mixed in. I did this with a massive makeup brush. I used about two parts basic skin tone to one part purple and tried to be quite generous across the entire model. This was to create an initial bit of depth and definition. I'll say here that this was kind of an experimental process. I wanted to try a more painterly method where you don't worry so much about smooth blends. Instead, you focus on creating the shapes in a more sketchy and abstract way and use colours to create a kind of moody feel. That's why I'm not going to use any black for shading. It's all going to be purples. So I was playing around with the colours and as such, there is a bit of back and forth. If anything, this video, as with a lot of my others, should show off that our hobby allows for a lot of experimentation and creativity and nothing is a set rule or method. Once this was done, I switched to a smaller brush and did this in a more stippled way. This is because I wanted to make sure the base purple was more of a shade colour and so was only in the gaps. Then I switched brush again and darkened the mix a little as I felt this jumped a bit too light right away. Yeah, I did say this was going to be experimental. Once this was done, I went back to the previous colour to make it more of a highlight. The alien hive often sends out small spores into the void of space. These vary from biological waste to experimental offshoots, hedging their bets that by spreading related life forms to further worlds, they could increase their reach. The deep hive started in just such a way. After traveling dormant for time unknown, it crashed through the atmosphere of Sankram. Next, I mixed in some bold titanium white with the purple and did an overbrush edge highlight pass. With this method, I keep more paint on the brush than I would with a dry brush and control the brush to hit the edges. This creates bold lines that pick up more prominent surfaces without needing to be too precise. I have Dana Howell to thank for this technique. She's showed it off in a couple of her videos and it just looks really nice. Again, getting that painterly feel that she's so good at. Now, I decided the colour scheme would be pale purple with dark red on the edges of the bigger armour panels. So, to start this off, I used Rhinox Hide with a bit of purple mixed in, obviously, and dry brushed it around those edges. To highlight, I did the same again with Bloody Red, covering less area. Landing undetected in one of the oceans, the shell burst and parasitic, genetic matter spewed forth. At first, the ocean remained unchanged. The parasites were only able to infect the smallest sea creatures, and life continued as it always had. However, as each generation passed, the parasites mutated their hosts until the creatures were unrecognisable. Driven by instinct, these caretakers harvested and infected larger animals, and the proto-hive emerged. So far, I was finding it a challenge to mix purple into everything, as it was feeling like no colour particularly stood out. I don't mind a monotone mini, but I was worried at the end it might just look like a boring mix of similar purple shades. I tried to get past this by adding in some orange fire next, taking the colour brighter. Finally, I added ice yellow to the purple and used the edge highlighting slash dry brushing hybrid again. I wasn't too sure about this, but I decided to leave it as it was to see if it worked after the other bits were done. As the hive grew, towers of cocoons, swollen and unnatural, rose from the seabed, filling the ocean. Brain bugs terrorised the ocean floor taking control of the nervous system of any creature unlucky enough to be in their path. The zombified creatures would then return to the hive where the worker bugs were waiting to cocoon them. The creatures were broken down and reformed to emerge from their cocoon as members of the hive. 
The softer parts needed to look a lot paler, so next I mixed white and purple together to block in the base colour for the tubes and squishy bits. I changed the tone again with moot green. Mixed in with purple and a decent amount of contrast medium, I used this as a shade to tint the soft areas. I made a huge mess and then realised I hated how green I'd gone with it. Okay, take two. More purple this time and a bit more watered down and I'm much happier. I also used this to tint the end of the barrel. Back to basic skin tone to line up the previous mix and I highlighted everything. As I said, I'm not worrying too much about smooth blends, I'm picking out the areas I want to accentuate. Also, apparently I can't hold a brush. Lucky that didn't go everywhere. The spread of the deep hive could not go unnoticed forever. At first, the Sancromites were filled with a paralysing terror, knowing that the infestation was a threat to their very existence, but soon they resolved to destroy it. They cordoned off areas and poisoned the waters. Although the poison did not affect the bugs, it starved them of the creatures to use as hosts or food. The instinct of the hive was to grow and not to fight, so the bugs could not change their fate. Slowly starving and unable to reproduce, the last creature died. Only a small clutch of eggs remained. There it would sit for decades, once again completely dormant. Now I want to create another different tone, so I put some purple into Drakenoff Nightshade and water it back down, then put it over those little sack things. I don't know what they are and to be honest I don't want to. Then I went back to highlighting the pale parts, adding more basic skin tone to the previous mix. Finally, for these bits, I added some bold titanium white to really brighten it up. I used this the same as before, not spending too much time on the neat edge highlights, but picking out the areas to accentuate. At this point, the deep hive could have been just a footnote in the history of the Sancromites, had the last eggs been destroyed completely by predators or the elements. But the hive received one lifeline. A group of scientists discovered the trace amounts of genetic code that had been leaching into the waters, unaware it was coming from the same infestation they had narrowly avoided a generation ago. A manned probe was sent into the depths to collect the remaining eggs. The disturbance awakened the bugs within and they easily overcame the pilot. For the first time, the deep hive had access to a sentient life form. Rather than breaking down its host, it kept the form intact so that it could keep the intelligence and awareness of the being. After coming back from near extinction, the deep hive had now found its queen. The process began anew, but this time directed efficiently by the new queen, and soon the ocean floors of Sankram were once more covered by the hive. Now, I wanted this guy pale, but I'm still getting a lot of dark purple from the overall colours. So, because I'm lazy and didn't want to go over previous steps, I created a glaze to go over the entire shell. This was made of mostly basic skin tone with a touch of purple and a load of Lamy and medium. I brushed this in thin layers everywhere except where the plates overlap. With thin enough layers, the first ones were dry by the time I'd finished the last, so I could go straight back to them and lighten the higher up areas even further. Yeah, that's looking awesome. Next time I might even start lighter than that, give it more of a creepy, uncooked shrimp vibe. After this, I re-established a brighter edge highlight using the same method from before. This time, the Sancromites waged an apocalyptic war that engulfed the entire planet. But although the Sancromites had devastating technology, the war was being won in more subtle ways. The Deep Hive was steadily terraforming the planet, Land-based life forms were mutated into wild creatures. The plant life grew wild and uncontrollable, and the spores released by the hive were turning the atmosphere itself poisonous to its native species. In the end, the planet of Sankram was entirely overrun with a rich and dangerous ecosystem. Right, I wasn't that happy with the orange, so I changed the approach. I used a lot of white and some corn red in with my purple, so it went to a more pink hue. I thinned this so it wouldn't completely cover the previous layers, then went over the edge highlights from before. At this point I blocked in the eyes with Luftwaffe uniform and a bit of purple. I then mixed in Beastie Brown and, again, purple to paint the little spike things and the... T 
teeth. Do bugs have teeth? Mandibles, I guess? Things were looking decent at the moment, but it gets to a point in a project where I need the ground filled in to get an idea of the overall colours. So I got desert yellow and did an overbrush. This was basically done with a large dry brush, but I left most of the paint on instead of wiping most of it away. I wanted to cover the top areas, but using purple to shade the sandstone would give that cool painterly effect. I should point out here that I gave myself a break from the mother colour, as I wanted the bright sandy colour. After I'd overbrushed the sides of the rock in a top-down motion, I watered down the paint to spread all over the upper facing areas. Once this dried I did the same again to get a decent coverage, however I wasn't trying to cover the purple completely. For this part it's fine if there's some variance in the tone as it just looks like shading back to that purple shadow colour. Once these previous layers had dried, I went over a final time with a heavy overbrush. Right, things were looking cool, but I now felt like it was still looking too dark in areas. This was meant to be pale, but there was still just a lot of purple on show. So guess what? Even more purple and basic skin tone. Yay! This was done the same as before, as a glaze to brighten up those dark bits of carapace. Right, we're so close to being done. Let's highlight some areas that aren't basic goddamn skin tone. I mix some bronze flesh stone in with a bit of purple and use it to highlight the spiky bits. I then make a mix of bone white and purple and highlight further, not forgetting those pearly whites. Then sky blue in with my purple to give the eyes and sacks a bit of light. Then I add white to this mix to give a little spot highlight just to make them look a bit shiny. To finish up the carapace I mixed mostly white with a bit of purple and went through with the sketchy edge highlight again just to really pick out those areas. I dry brushed the base with bone white and then added in some finishing touches and finally I had this. Once the first world was conquered, it was easy for the Hive to send spores and creature ships out to colonise further planets. The Queen of the Deep Hive has been surprisingly receptive to diplomatic relations, and maintains their destructive origin is the fault of the Sancromites, as the natives chose annihilation before the Deep Hive ever had a say. Whether or not this is true is fiercely debated amongst the other races, but either way, any time contact is necessary, strict infestation protocols are followed. Win the war before it has started, as they say. For when dealing with the deep hive, carelessness is tantamount to extinction. If you've made it this far then thank you. This was a fun challenge, trying to make use of colours differently than I would normally, not having the comfort of just using any old colour I decide. If you enjoyed this then I would encourage you to check out my Patreon, my coffee, even my other socials. Any support is greatly appreciated. Thank you and see you next time.